Hi there guys and welcome to another Trains in 2018 video. Today you join me back on the Harrogate Loop. As you guys know, this is one of my favourite routes uh, in Train Simulator, just for the sheer detail and the scenic beauty of it really. It, it, it's one of those routes that just, it, it's got me, well and truly got me. Uh, this video, as you already know, is in the Northern 170. The reskin is by BH Reskins, by Alex from BH Reskins, and it's available on their Facebook page, which is linked in the description down below. I should do that there, really, shouldn't I? It's, it's down below there. Um, it's not 100% accurate. There's some issues around the way the 170s are mapped that they haven't quite got round yet. So this is sort of like an intermediate livery. Think of it as a release so we've all got something, but it isn't perfect yet while it's still being worked on. Uh, I hope Alex is still working on it as well. It'd be nice to see it proper soon enough so these are the 170s that were cascaded down from the scottish region well, i should really call it scott rail now these days um and these have recently started running on the harrogate loop route so i thought let's give it a go let's give it a go this scenario is a clone scenario and slightly edited. This is the 2 Charlie 3-3, three, three, I think it is, um, that I have just, in the editor, swapped out the 150 for the 170. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, I have done a tutorial video which is available on my Facebook page. Uh, well, it's not my Facebook page, it's on my YouTube channel. And I just use the editor to swap this out. So if you do want to do this yourselves, you can. So let me just check, it is, yep, 2 Charlie 3-3. Three, three. So it's one of the original VP ones that comes with it. Uh, fingers crossed there'll be no issues with me just swapping that out, to be honest with you. Right, next stop is Poppleton. So one of the reasons I actually picked this one is because the, the weather looks incredibly like it does outside today. So it feels quite right to do it. I'm about an hour behind this in real life, um, but it's not far off even the right time of day, so it's very rare that I get to do that. I know some people actually only drive at the time it is outside. Uh, one of the guys on the stream was talking about it the other day, um, which I quite like the idea of. I used to do that quite a lot in flight sim, if I'm honest. I used to always do the right time and the right weather, but uh, train sim I tend not to do that too much. But I suppose it's nice to be able to do it, isn't it? So let's get a look at the livery. Oh, Alan. Didn't set my lights. Bad move, that, isn't it? Bad move. So yeah, I mean, I'm quite pleased the way it's turned out. It looks quite nice. 170 strangely suit the northern livery, or they've managed to get to change the livery to suit it, I suppose. There'll actually be another 170 scenario coming up quite soon as well. I'm uh, just about to record a Hull Trains 170 scenario. So I do like driving them, I don't mind that whiny noise. Lots of people have an issue with that in this pack, but I actually think it sounds very much like a 170. What I should really say is the 170s we get where I am. Uh, lots of people, especially with the AP packs, comment, oh, it doesn't sound anything like a so-and-so, it doesn't sound anything like a so-and-so. I can get on one 158 and get on another, and some of the sounds are very, very different. Um, so I always think there is always going to be variation in the way they're maintained, the way they're driven, driving techniques by TIC to TIC do change. Depends how the driver's trained to drive as well. Oh, I was looking at that 50 as well. That was really silly of me.
It's quite strange having driven this not well very recently in a, in a 150 and driving the 150 for the um, Martin Vale route. Um, the 170 does feel more insulated from the outside world, which in, in real life it will be. The cab is a, is, is a much better design with double glazing, um, better sound insulation. track noises are a little bit dulled down which I do quite like. I bet the drivers, I'm sure the new drivers are loving having these. And just like the Marston Vale line, this is going to be a challenge because I've got a three car unit and this platform is just big enough for a three car unit so I'm going to try and make sure my stops are as accurate as possible. Not too bad, not too bad. Got to remember, I've got quite a way to go to that stop marker, but uh, we're in the platform absolutely fine. You will notice the destinations have been changed as well. I'm sure it won't be long until uh, Chris gets his hands on them and changes those out. That's another thing about this route, they've used the cars well. very reminiscent of what's going on outside really isn't it? the line side vegetation at the minute is everywhere it's really really thick really really big and uh, network row actually uh, are talking about a mass cull of line side vegetation uh, I know it's always a massive undertaking every year uh, all over the network but um, there's a big push to get it actually all cleared so I'll go back to like how it was in the early 60s which in my eyes I don't really like. I know it's not about what I like and I know we're not talking about aesthetics here, we're, we're talking about uh, speed and reliability of service and leaf fall season is by far one of the trickiest times of the year for uh, network grow and train operating companies to keep schedule and Maintenance crews, sandite units, railhead treatment trains. I don't know if there is actually any specific sandite work that still happens. I 
Another railhead treatment train jets the rails, but I don't know if it leaves Sandite on afterwards or anything. I'm not sure. I suppose you wouldn't need to leave any Sandite if you jetted it, I suppose. Hamilton. This is Hamilton. Those of you that have played uh, BVE would know that. Um, actually, talking of BVE, this was another one of my favourite trains to drive in BVE. The cab was really nice. Always felt quite light and airy. looked quite comfortable didn't it a 170 cab although some drivers and I really don't like them and uh, not because of the way they're driving them, just because of the cabs see that folds forward and slips forward so you can get in and out that door and sort of have a bit of a cross passageway sort of thing nice cup holders one for your driver any second or two cups of coffee if you're most drivers Had too far past that stop board, look. Oh, gutted. I was trying to make that really well. I should have a drink, guys, I do apologise.
castle's not far, so we don't need to worry about getting up to speed too much, I suppose. Four two coming down the line. I wonder if this is uh, if the one seventies have displaced the the one four twos. Again, just that cab front too far past that stop board. I'll get it. I'll get it. This is a really bad time and I did the same thing as this yesterday. So I spent 
all day yesterday from 8 in the morning um, until oh, when did I actually finish leaving the shed yesterday 6 uh, sort bits out and recording and stuff and today I started in here at about 20 past 9 uh, I had an hour's break at about lunchtime and I've come back in done another scenario then I stepped out of the shed for about half an hour saw the kids and that and then came back in it's now half to uh, sorry, it's now um, five to three, and I'm uh, keep getting little bouts of wanting to go to sleep. So I'm having to really pick myself up now. Real drivers must have this because yesterday I was recording <laughs> a um, what was I in? Three six five scenario, I think it was in the East Coast Mainline. And um, I fell asleep. I know it was recording already, and I actually, I actually nodded off. And it was the first time I've ever seen myself properly asleep and, and do that. And actually watching it, I'd probably done it about four or five times before I actually fell asleep for that length of the period of time. So I was probably actually only asleep for about 30 seconds and then AWS warned and woke me up and I jumped. But I thought, oh, I must be really tired. I didn't know I'd fallen asleep those four times before. No idea. You want to talk about micro sleeps? They exist, they happen, they happen in the trade sim world as well as real life. I always thought you could know if you've fallen asleep or dozed off, didn't you? I mean, that is unlike me. That is unlike me. I, I very rarely have naps or anything like that. I enjoy them when I get them, don't get me wrong. But uh, usually if, I'm, if I've got my mind set to something, then it's, it's sort of happening. But really strange, really, really strange. So you think about real drivers in real life. Before this journey, if I'd realised how I felt, I would have got myself a big old coffee. In fact, do you know what I'm going to do? you end up seeing this on camera because it's the first time I've had to do this on camera, but I'm going to text Mrs T and ask her to bring me a coffee. This will be a first for an Alan Thompson video, that will. <laughs> it's not, it's happened loads of times, but it's just always been, uh, the, the mic's always been muted or something beforehand. Always forget about this climb into Nasborough. Oh, looks a little bit starry there. I'm getting to that point again where I'm going to have to cut down my uh, train sim folder, I think, just because I'm getting some tile loading stutters. I'm looking at a, an M2 drive to stick some bits on uh, instead of my. Um, SSDs, just to try and see if I can get that little bit of extra performance out of train sim. I mean, frame rate wise, we've had nothing before below 53.
and this is a station I cannot wait. I say it every time I do a video on this route, don't I? It's a station I cannot wait to visit in real life. Oh, not bad, Alan. Not bad at all. Full climb in it. I trust the old 150 sitting in Starbuck 4 is lit. This platform's a little bit longer, so I don't have to worry too much. Same again. Cab front just ahead of it.
might actually have to get a coffee maker for the shed. Stuttering is actually really irritating me. It's not the root, because uh, it's not my graphics settings either, because my uh, frame rate isn't actually dropping it, it's literally the load times from the SSD. Again, I was watching that 20 speech. This is what happens when you're tired, isn't it? It's the truth. I do like Harrogate Station as well, there's a nice scene of a RAC van with the smoking car there. Toss things lovely. These little cameos I think are part, part, part of what makes routes. way to Hornbeam. So what have we got after this? I can't remember the route after this. I drive to Harrod quite a lot, but I never drive this side. So we've got Hornbeam, Panel, Wheaton, Horsforth, Headingley, Burley Park, and then Leeds.
I mean, it's a shame because I quite like the route off uh, out this end of it as well. I did do a leads to Harrogate the other day on the stream. Two seconds. Bit of fresh air and a coffee will do me the world of good. Keep me in check, will it? I know some of you out there are going to moan about that. You stopped the video, you paused the video in a video, you should have just edited that out. As you know, I don't edit anything. I keep my videos nice and raw, and it's how you see them. It's part of my my way of doing things. So I do hope you understand that. I do hope you understand that. Yeah, it's not strong enough. Not going to exterior view as most of you know because I horrifically overran that platform. Think about this one. Is it just panel? Is that how it's, how it's, how it's, how it's pronounced? Panel? Let's look it up and see what panel is famous for. A primary school and a golf club by the looks of it. It's part of the new civil parish of Panel and Burn Bridge. Well known for its golf course, so I just found that out. For its young person's football team. And training on the Crimple Meadow Field. Every February, residents of Panel put on a pantomime. It is written and performed by residents of the village and is always well attended. It is believed to be so well loved by locals because of the light-hearted amusement and entertainment that it offers. Oh, that's quite nice. Oh, it used to be Pan Hal. It was earlier known as Rosset. Again, I've gone way too fast round a very sharp bend. It's awful in it. Sorry about my driving, guys. I do apologise. Station overrun, speeding through corners, missing speed restrictions left, right, and centre. I was all in the back of my head as soon as we left um, there as well. I was going 20 restriction, 20 restriction, 20 restriction. Then when I put the power on a minute ago, I was like, remember the 20 restriction at the end of the bridge? No. And the first panel scout group is based in the old school on Spring Lane. 
built in 1817. Scary fair in 1948. Here about the station. It says it's a busy station considering the size of the village. This is due to the large amount of commuters using the station, journeying into Leeds every weekday. Interesting. It was somewhere I just never heard of until uh, this route. Nairsborough, Harrogate, I've known. The rest of them, not really. Two stop boards. But the panel is the place with the pump, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Man, his dog look. Oh, and his lady friend with him. I like that. I'm actually trying to. Get, I'm on Google Maps. What I'm trying to do is get the name of the pub. Looks like there's a sign. Oh, there's a co op. Panel Motor Center. You don't really get a clear view of the station. You can off the bridge. Oh. I'm not paying attention again. Yeah, I can't seem to see the pub. That's a shame. I never thought about using Street View and Google and that to check what stations look like. It's quite a weird idea. Quite like that idea. It'd be very cool if there was a Google rail view. God, can you imagine that? I bet that wouldn't actually be that hard to do either. As long as you, the camera wouldn't be out of gauge. I 
know the Google one has to sort of sit on a on top of a car. seems to disappear. Street view, a bit of oh, right, okay, I see. So, this bridge underneath me. Yeah, all right, that's not bad at all, actually. I'm literally looking at that view. I'm looking up here. It's not completely accurate, because that's a road, and I don't seem to have the road textures, but that'll be my end issue, not the route issue. But uh, it's still very nice. It's a little tunnel, not a big tunnel, is it? So I'm getting really preoccupied with that <laughs> Google Street View there. What do you guys use? You guys, I mean, I've, I've done a bit, it sounds daft, you can do a little bit of train spotting with uh, Google Street View. There used to be a, uh, one of the railway forums I used had a whole forum about spots from Street View. Um, but you guys, I know they use it for route building, recreation a lot. I wonder if any of you guys have actually used it like 
while you're driving along to like check out places or anything. I know you can get the little follow on route that goes uh, uh, in your screen. I, I'm not, not really too fussed about that one if I'm honest. I'm pleased Northern have got the 170s. Oh, I'm chinned to see them go from Scotland. I really am. Um, the Edinburgh Glasgow route. I mean, I remember when these were brought in as like the the newest thing in the world. They were they were lovely. So I will miss them. I will miss them. I can't say the the 385s are going to have. I don't know, sort of the... They're not going to be as comfortable as a 170, are they? A lot of the more modern units, like the 700 and stuff, have very clinical interiors. I don't even know if 3 have any first class or not, I'm not sure. If you guys know, please let me know in the comments. Do 385s have first class? Horsforth, Headingley, Burley Park, Leeds. I've never read that, it just says out of service. That's pretty cool. You can just about read what's going on in there.
We've got another decent overrun. Alan, come on. I hope you're bearing with me with this one, guys. More BTP in Yorkshire than there is anywhere else, I think. Imagine seeing him running a bit late so the kids are back from school. All good fun. All good fun. I'm going to try and close that door just before we get there. You know when you get that one day off and you try and get everything done before the kids come home from school. Today's been one of them. The past two days I have to try and get on top of things. Um, I've crammed as much as I can in to getting it done. And sometimes, like this video, the quality suffers for that. But like I said yesterday, you got a whole video that you guys will never get because I fell asleep. So, <laughs> so this one you will get. It just won't be that good. It's real life and it's what happens. It's so like before I started doing this, I'd very ev barely ever get to run a whole route or run a whole scenario start to finish without being interrupted or having to save it and restart it. Or Sometimes it'd be days or weeks. I think every scenario I had had the resume button lit. What's it like for you guys? Do you guys usually get enough peace and quiet to do it? Do you have busy family lives? Are you joyfully single and able to spend all your free time doing what you want? I say joyfully. Being single has its pros and cons, doesn't it?
I think Matt P had a coffee maker in his his garage at one point, didn't he? forgot how close the station was. I thought I had another bend to go, yep. Quite weird thing, isn't it? That the the one seventies really, they sort of bought brought with them air conditioning. I mean, this line gets one five eights, and a few other lines had one five eights, but one five eights and loco hauled coaches from Mark II aircons onwards were the only things that had aircon really. And if you watch the program about the NC125 uh, on um, Channel 5 recently, Channel 5, Channel 4, one of the two, um, there was like a whole section on how revolutionary it was to have air conditioning. And uh, you, just, you just sort of take it for granted these days, didn't you? And even pretty cheap cars have aircon. But even when I was, even when I was a teenager, it was, it was still an, an extra that cost a, a fortune. I remember my dad Sierra had it. That was the first car I remember having with aircon. It was a 1993 Sapphire. 
do love this little approach into Leeds and the fact that we have Leeds station in the game now. Just really hoping somebody comes along and starts doing the um, East Coast Main Line between, well, the East Coast Main Line and Leeds. wasn't happy with me cancelling my AWS quick enough even though I did. Oh no, hang on. That's me pressing it. And it's not moving. Uh, it's not got my kind of I mean, this I'm using my uh, Nostromo and it, the keys are Got to really give them a. It's quite quite hard to get exactly right that. There we are, guys. So once again, thanks ever so much for joining. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Head on over to the Facebook page if you want a bit of a laugh and a bit of a crack. Um, it was one B. I was stopping in. Yes, for one, so it's perfect. Uh, also, join me on Twitch uh, Sundays from 1900 and Wednesdays from 1900. So probably tonight when this video goes out, actually, I'll be streaming after that. Once again, guys, thanks ever so much for joining me, and I'll catch you again next time.